Are you feeling frustrated when it comes to picking a niche for your business because you are a multi-passionate person? Well, what if you don't have to choose just one thing? I'm a big believer that when we embrace that having a variety of strengths, skills, and passions can be a wonderful gift, you can then choose how you can creatively showcase this in your business. So in this video, I'm going to share with you, first of all, why not every single passion that you have should be turned into a business and how you can create a unique advantage by combining your passions and your interests in one business. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, I'm Lydia Lee, and I'm the work reinvention coach and solopreneur strategist at Screw the Cubicle. And I've helped hundreds of budding and existing small business owners and entrepreneurs to create an intentional business that's truly designed from their unique genius zone so that all of us can experience true freedom in our lives and our businesses. If you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the notification bell button to be the first to know when new videos hit this channel every single month. not every passion should be turned into a business. You get to decide what passions are worthwhile ideas to be turned into a business because a business is built to solve problems for others, not just something you enjoy doing. And it's great if you enjoy a lot of the skills that you bring to the table, but we also have to marry it with a problem to solve in the world because that's what people buy, right? People buy solutions to an urgent problem they want solving or the desire that they want to come into fruition, right? So whatever passion list of passions that you have as ideas to be turned into a business, make sure to be asking yourself, does this passion, this skill, this interest that I have, um, has a marketplace demand and has also people that might be looking to learn the skill, have the skill implemented for them and searching for examples um, of other people that are making money from a similar skill set or a similar passion is always a great way as well to give you a little bit of validation that there is worthwhile to pursue that as a business. And when I say not every passion should be turned into a business is true because not every passion is something that you may want to gift to others, right? Passions can be something you hold true for yourself. You know, for example, um, maybe a little secret I haven't told people, but I love to sing, for example. Um, I sing sometimes publicly, <laughs> most of the time for myself. It's kind of a thing that I like doing, right? That helps me to stay grounded and feel creative, but it's not something I can foresee myself doing to make money because I don't want to perform, right? Um, as a career. I love music. I love the art of it. Don't want to perform that piece of the art. I want to keep for myself, <laughs> right? And so you may have certain passions that it's just for your well-being as a hobby, right? But a, a business is something that you can see yourself doing things with others, right? Being able to do something to solve a problem, create solutions with that particular passion that is necessary in the world. And sure, you may have to go out there and talk to some people to ask whether or not they would pay for this passion of yours. Is there a niche? Is there a unique um, place in the marketplace, right? Right? that your passions can be turned into supporting others, but know that, you know, you will have to help others along the way, right? And some of my clients, for example, their passions get tainted the minute they think about monetizing it. And they may not want to monetize a particular passion and keep it for themselves. And that is so okay as well. Not every passion needs to be turned into a business. Think about, right, as you come up with these ideas of what your passions are and what can be monetized and turned into a business, we want to also be thinking about what is purposeful to you. So something you enjoy doing, something that feels meaningful for you to do, and what's also profitable work, right? Because we've got to make money with a business. It's got to fund you so that you can do more of this work, right? Something you like doing or, and are good at, right? Hopefully that others are also actively seeking for. So that might be the marriage to, or, you know, the thing you have to question, right? In order to figure out which idea to pursue. 
Now, another thing that could be another resource that could be helpful to you is if you haven't done so already, you might want to consider taking my what business should I start based on my personality quiz, which I'm going to just put up there in the card so that you can uh, get the link for it very easily. It's a nine question quiz that's going to allow you to uh, learn more about the types of service based businesses that are most suited in the way that you naturally you know, operate as a person and what your personality type might be. And that can also support you in choosing the right idea that's right for you. So at this point, you might be saying or asking, you know, Lydia, I really have these suite of skills, array of interests and talents that I would love to be able to do more of instead of having to choose one thing. And I feel yeah, because I too am a multi-passionate person that gets a little bored if I'm only needing to pick one thing <laughs> because I am someone that comes with an array of experience, that comes with different tools in my tool belt that I want to share with others and I think that's what makes me unique as well and I think you might feel the same way if you're a multi-passionate person so how do we embrace that how do we use that combination not only to make sure it's meaningful for us to do so but also it amplifies right the strength of your work for your potential clients as well so how I might look at combining your passions and talents is when you take a look at the first question I asked, right, which is what ideas can you do with your skills that will solve a problem? That's going to be the obvious skill set you lead with, right? The thing you know how to solve most strongly, right, or most importantly, or your most transformative transformational skill set that can impact the most so far, right? And then you've got all these other skills that you want to bring to the table to amplify that original leading skill, right? It's how I like to look at it. <laughs> so for example, my leading skill is coaching, right? Helping people discern information, make decisions, figure things out, not feel so fuzzy. I'm really good at that. And in my past careers, I've always mentored. I've always sort of trained as part of my repertoire of skills, right? Um, and so coaching becomes my main skill that I lead with, but I've got all these other skill sets like my strategic brain that can piece together uh, plans and small bite-sized goals for people to achieve in order to make the dream come alive, right? I also have, you know, mindfulness and meditation training that comes into my experience of coaching that allows people to experience my style of coaching in a much more grounded way, right? So there's no hustle. It's everything is grounded with intention. And we challenge ourselves constantly to ensure that anything we're about to take action on is in alignment with our core values, right? So that's how I would combine these other passions of mindfulness. I don't want to be a mindfulness teacher, right? Or a meditation instructor, but I do find these skills important for my life and therefore potentially would also support my clients to do things like business building and lifestyle design with um, this value in mind, right? So I combine it, I, I teach it, for example, in my courses, how to use mindfulness with decision making, right? I coach in that way as well. Uh, so that it's, it's very different from just doing, 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 and there's a lot of reflection and why we do what we do and so forth. So that's an example of how I might combine a couple of different passions into my lead talent, right? Which is coaching. So what I would love to encourage you to do is take a look and see if you can find a unique way of combining more than one of your interests in order to produce even better work for your people, or could also help you stand out, right? For this, from the sea of sameness of other people that do what you do, simply because you are bringing those talents to the table and packaging them up where they get more of you, right? When they hire someone someone like you. Another example is um, a client of mine who is a coach as well, but she's also an illustrator um, by trade of her in her old business. And she didn't want to be an illustrator anymore. And in graphic design, you know, her new passion was really about transformation and nutrition coaching and using a lot of right her, her what she did in her life, right, to make money from uh, her experience of doing that 
for herself and then doing it in a business. But she's like, well, I, I'm still a good illustrator and I actually enjoy parts of that work. How do I get that into the business? So one of the things that we had her doing was actually in her social media, in her marketing, um, once a month, she would illustrate, right, whatever newsletter theme that she had or social media um, posts that she was planning for is she would illustrate and draw her own designs, right, as a part of her brand. And that allowed her that outlet of not losing the illustration skill, but it also amplified how people saw her business because no, no other nutritional coaches were drawing <laughs> their own brand. And so that is how she could also be utilizing that part of her skill set to contribute, right? Something unique in her business. And people recognize her illustrations as hers, right? People see it on social media on the wall. They recognize her drawing right away and know it's her brand. And that is one way of combining and actually not losing some of those passions that you can make it even more powerful when you use Use it in your business so so many different creative ways that you can um that uh, of combinations that can yield a unique proposition for your business and i want you to start thinking about all these different skill sets how would they amplify your lead skill your lead thing that you solve the biggest problems with in your business or business idea and where can we, you know, where could you use these different skills in different parts of your business, whether it's in your client work, in your marketing, in the way you might build relationships and connect, right? How could that really help you to um, have a stronger business because of it, right? Now, I have another video that I created um, a few months ago that might be really helpful to you as well. And it's called Three Ways to Find Your Unique Selling Proposition. And that would get the wheels turning a bit for you as well in how to find your US. So I'm going to put it up there in the link for you to watch it after this video as well. Now, I would like to quickly ask you here before we continue is what do you think might be a great combination of two to three passion skills or strengths or talents that you come with that actually have a great combination that if used together, you could really show up to help others more powerfully. I would love for you to share it in the comments below. Another big question I get from multi-passionate people is, how do I know that that's the passion that I want to double down on to make a business around, right? And to spend energy, investment of time and money into growing that business. How do I know for sure? And it is a hard question, isn't it? Because it's hard to know what is the forever business. And perhaps the truth is that we never really have a forever business. That's my belief now after being almost a decade in business is that we are constantly evolving in our business in order to become the better entrepreneur and to do more of what makes us tick and what brings us joy that we want to contribute into the world. So first thought is to let go of the forever business thought and know that there is a just a right for right now business for you. However, there is a way to experiment with whether or not you should pursue a business before you start putting time, money and effort into it. And that's what I call a self-made internship, right? Most people don't think about this because we are expected to just know the best business for ourselves and launch it <laughs> really quickly. And that feels really daunting. And I think there is a middle ground here. There's a middle stage here that you can be testing out ideas and beta testing with some real humans before you make that commitment. And most importantly, to actually improve your work and know what it is that you're designing and how you help others through that internship experience. It's actually one of the core things that I teach my students that have made a world of difference in uh, confidently launching their businesses when the time comes, right? So you can try on an idea for size, right? By testing it with real humans before you launch, before you have a website, before you do all the the glitzy things you think you need to do in a business is that you start to work with people. I can't stress how important that is because that's going to allow you to see whether or not you do love this work, that you can see yourself growing this work. And you're also working with some real beta clients, right? That can allow you to improve the process, right? What it is that you teach, what it is that you coach on, whatever it is that you do and see it happen in real life and make improvements before you offer it for real. 
child in public, right? So many benefits of beta testing. And on you know a personal level, it's going to help you to know if this is something you do want to pursue. And if it isn't, it's not too late to change course. It's not too late to change and shift something to make it more meaningful for you to do that work. And you get that permission, right? To test it before you launch. I did a whole video just about how to validate your business idea through beta testing before you launch because it's such an important step for me and my students, right? You can watch it after this video right up here, the three steps to validate your business idea before launching. I think that's going to really support you in kind of thinking through testing ideas first, warming up to your business before you officially decide to marry it and put it out there in the world. And now I would love to hear from you. What was your biggest takeaway from this video and what would you love to implement in your multi-passionate business that's going to feel authentic to you and allow you not to just choose one thing, but combine some very beautiful creative combinations that would actually amplify your business out there and gives you a unique advantage to stand out in the marketplace. I would love for you to share your ideas with me in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this video was valuable to you, share it with someone you know that would benefit also. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel so that yourself and more people can find these videos uh, that I produce every single month. And I can't wait to see you in our next video.